Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Catherine Healy. And I'm here to introduce the next piece, which is the variation of the sugar plum fairy in the Nutcracker. The Nutcracker <clears throat> is a very, uh, it occupies a very unique place in ballet. One thing is that it's a very important part of the business side of ballet. Um, anecdotally, I've heard numbers like it, it comprises something like 40 to 65 percent of the budget of a ballet company. And in that sense, it's like Black Friday. It puts the ballet companies in the black. That's when they balance their budgets for the year. But much more importantly, in an artistic and a spiritual sense, it's the most magical part of ballet. And for a lot of children and a lot of professional dancers, that would be the first real ballet they see in the theater as a child. And it's a vital part of growing up as a ballet student when you dance one of the children's roles in the Nutcracker and you peek in the door and you see the professional dancers rehearsing or you're behind the scenes and you watch them from the wings. It's, it's a vital part of growing up as an artist. I know it was a very magical, enchanted part of my childhood. I played Marie in George Balanchine's Nutcracker for two years as a child. And later in my career, in Vienna, I danced the Grigorovich production, and in England, I did the Ronald Heine production, and in Chicago, the Bruce Page production. There are a number of ways um, and functions. When it's a company <clears throat> that doesn't have guest artists, then usually part of Clara will run through the whole ballet and become the sugar plum fairy at the end. A lot of principal dancers also get extra work at Christmas time. They go around to different companies as a guest artist, and so you slot in at the end as the Sugar Plum Fairy and the Cavalier. The Nutcracker was first produced in the Imperial Theater, the Mariinsky Theater in St. Petersburg, Russia, in 1892. It was choreographed by Maris Pedipa and his assistant Lev Ivanov. And the beautiful music was composed by Tchaikovsky. And uh, it was a success, but not as successful as later. Like I said, now it's a staple of the repertoire. Um, what we're going to see today is the variation of the Sugar Plum Fairy. Uh, typically, a classical pas de deux is done first as the, the couple dances together, then the boy has his solo while the ballerina rests, then the ballerina does her variation and the dancer noble comes back and they do the coda at the end. So what you're going to see is that variation. Now, this variation in New York City Ballet is performed at the beginning of the second act. Um, it's not done as part of the main part of it. So uh, another thing that makes it notable in terms of musical composition is that Tchaikovsky used the instrument called the Celesta, which is that bell sound that we all hear in the Sugar Plum Fairy. And that is related to the glockenspiel. It's a higher pitch. It's a, it's a <clears throat> percussion instrument, but it's typically pay, played by a musician who is a keyboardist. So it looks like a little, a little upright piano. And when I was in Vienna, the Vienna Philharmonic accompanied all of our performances. But that particular instrument would be played by one of our rehearsal pianists from the company, uh, because it's it's usually done by a keyboard musician. So that makes it special within the Nutcracker score. Today, uh, I'm just going to show you. It, it's part of what makes this variation so difficult is you have to make it look effortless. But there's a lot of very challenging point work. And today we have my student, Catherine Kouloris, is going to perform it for us. I've trained her for six years. And the last two years, she's trained at the Miami City Ballet in their summer intensive. So I'd like Catherine, come on out. This is Catherine Kouloris. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, <laughs> hang in there. <laughs> OK. So um, the first thing in this variation, uh, and I'm, I have her doing a pretty traditional version of it. It's close to what I did in Varna. Um, there are always differences. You tweak it to fit the individual dancer. But the opening steps are a regular step that you would do in point class. And as you become more advanced, what you work on is not clunking down this way. You want to roll what we call rolling through the feet. It's the articulation and the points you should never leave the ground. 
So you want to come down very carefully as though the floor is hot. Can you show us a couple of those, just at the beginning of the variation? Very good. Yes, exactly. Yes, and in that same vein, the passe releves, it's another staple of point class. I'm sure you've all seen this in basic ballet. When we go passe releve, what you want to do is not clunk down like one, two, or down on both feet at once. You want to come down through a susu fifth and land very gently into fifth position. So again, like you're landing on a pillow. Can you take the part of the two passes and the pirouette? And then the port de bras. Good. Right. Well, why don't we try that one more time and you pull in your left arm a little bit more and relevate down into the floor of the pillow. Go up, breathe. Good. And now the soft port of arm. Very good. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so that is the pirouette is a difficult, you can see, that has to be worked on to get it to be as good as that second time. And then all of a sudden we have to do this beautiful port de bras that's very soft, like nothing happened, but of course something did happen. And the other thing people don't quite realize when you're watching about pirouettes is that these side lights are very, very strong. And when you're spotting, they tend to stream. So when you see professional dancers, they've gained a lot of stage experience and that doesn't bother them, but when you're starting out, that's a really tough thing to do. All right, well done. Let's, uh, another thing we have in this variation, there's some little sautés on point, like this, and those are also very difficult to do. But here, we also have to have a nice head position and perfect arms. Let's take a couple of those. Now very sharp here. Yes. So the look we're going for in this variation is the ballerina on the jewel box. But it's, it takes a lot of hard work to get there. Okay. All right. So uh, aside from me nitpicking at you endlessly, what would you say has been the hardest thing about preparing for these performances with this variation? The hardest part for me was building up enough stamina to perform this piece and also the refinement and the point work and the bois de bras and the eight pommel while developing the artistry to portray the sugar plum fairy. Yes, yes, all of that. And you've done a good job with it, yes. <laughs> all right, and before I let you go and perform the dance for us, um, do you have anything else you'd like to add? I just want to say I'm very excited to be here tonight and I wanted to thank Kat Wildish and her crew for um, providing us with the beautiful opportunity to be here at Perry Dance Capizio Center. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you, Matt Bonanzi, and thank you, Taylor Gordon, and everyone at Perry Dance. This, this is such a beautiful event. Um, thank you. You're all done. And you go get ready. <laughs> go have a <laughs> Okay. So, yes. I hope that per that will give you a new appreciation for The Nutcracker the next time you go to see a full-length production, and also to give a little context for the variation. So thank you so much, and enjoy the rest of the show. Thank mm -hmm. you.